Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Hope you all are in best of your health. This video is part two of the earlier video that I created on arrow functions. In that video, we discussed about the syntactical and behavioral differences of regular and arrow functions. If you want to learn about the basics of arrow functions and these differences, I would recommend you to go through that video first before moving forward with this one. I'll add the link to it at the top right corner here. So without much further ado, let's get started. Converting regular functions to an arrow functions does make your code look beautiful and concise. But the differences between them is not just limited to the syntax. Blindly converting every regular function to an arrow function can create bugs in your code. So now let's discuss the cases where you should not use arrow functions. So now let's one by one discuss the scenarios where you should not be using arrow functions and be careful around them. First one is prototype methods. So now let's consider this scenario. Here we've created a class called YouTube channel, which has two properties called a name to it and the number of subscriber it has. For instance, if you want to add subscribers to your channel, you've written a function called apps add subscriber in which you're doing nothing but incrementing the subscriber property on your object. At line number 15, I've created an object called my channel, adding a subscriber to it, and at line number 17, logging it. Let's see what it prints. Okay, we've incremented the subscriber. Now let's see the way we have added the add subscriber method to the prototype. It is the regular function that we have created. For instance, if you have, if you are writing a prototype method to a class, instead of writing a regular function, you make it an arrow function. So now let's see if it behaves as is. Oops, it did not. You have called add subscriber to the object, but the subscriber property of the object is not getting incremented. Why so? As we have already discussed in a previous video, that arrow functions don't have a this. The this keyword in it gets lexically resolved. What does that mean? It means that this keyword acts like any other variable that you define in a function. If it does not exist in the function scope, the JavaScript engine would try to find it in the outer function scope in which it is defined. The outer function scope here is the global context in which this class has been defined. So to check if both of these variables are same, let's capture the outer functions context in a variable called self and see if both of them are same. Let's run it. It returns true. It is same. So when your JavaScript engine tried to execute the statement at line number 11, this, this pointed to the self and this self does not have any property called subscribers. And it was undefined, so it did not increment anything. So you must have been thinking why it did work before with regular functions. Let's make it a regular function again. So regular functions are behaviorally different from arrow functions. This keyword in a regular function is the context, and the context in it is dynamic, depends upon the way it is invoked. Here, this regular function initially was invoked with the context of my channel. So here, this would point to my channel. And let's check if it is true. If this, this is equals to my channel. Yes, it is true. So be very careful when you are working with prototype methods. Don't use arrow functions at all. It will mess up with your code. Next case, constructor functions. So in JavaScript, as you already know, that a regular function can be used as a constructor function. What does that mean? It means that it can be instantiated with a new keyword and different instances of it can be created. So let's look at this example. I've created a regular function and it's pointing to a variable called YouTube channel. We have instantiated it at line number six and captured it in an object called my channel. Let's try to run it and see if the object has been created or not. Yes, it was created. So 
let's think of a scenario where you are writing a constructor function so instead of writing a regular function you made it an arrow function now let's run it and see if it works it gave you an error youtube channel is not a constructor why did we run into this error let's go back to the behavioral differences of regular function and arrow function here on this top left corner here we have defined a regular function when we dived into the functions object we saw that it has a property called prototype which has a constructor property in it which helps you create instances of a regular function with the help of a new keyword but when we created an arrow function and deep dive into its object we saw that there is no such prototype property in it so that is why we are not able to instantiate it so when you are trying to create constructor functions don't use arrow functions use regular functions instead so moving on to the next case which is method and object literal here we have defined an object called youtube channel which has some properties like name video count subscribers and some methods like subscribe unsubscribe and add video here i'm adding a subscriber by calling subscribe method on the youtube channel object which will do nothing but increment the this dot subscriber property on youtube channel let's run it and see if the subscribers are getting added to the object or not yes we have incremented the count of subscribers to 2 since we have called the subscribe method twice so as we all can see here is that subscribe is a regular function and what we have established so far with respect to regular function is that it has a dynamic context and the context it holds depends upon the way it has been invoked so here it has been invoked with the context of the object youtube channel so here within this function this will point to the object youtube channel so when you call this dot subscriber so it looks that if youtube channel has a property called subscribers yes it has so when you increment it the subscriber the value of the subscriber property gets incremented so here you see two as an output you sub call subscribe once and then twice then the subscriber of the youtube channel got incremented so what if you change this regular function to an arrow function how this will behave then let's find out converting the regular function to an arrow function now let's rerun the code oops nothing happened why because as we have discussed earlier the arrow functions don't have a this this gets lexically resolved by lexically resolving means that this will point to a context outside it outside in which it is defined that is the context outside of youtube channel so here let's see if these two are same by defining a property which will point to the context outside it and see if the self which we have defined outside it is equals to the this which is present inside the arrow function yes it's true that means the context which is outside the youtube channel is equal to the context which this holds inside the arrow function so this was another case where you have to be careful when you when you are working with object literal and using arrow functions within it you might run into such errors so the next case is call bind and apply in javascript these functions are used to set the context of a function so by saying setting the context of a function means setting the value of this keyword in it so here we have defined a greet function which is a regular function we have used this dot animal in it here at line number 11 to set the value of this i am calling this greet function with the context of object obj which looks something like this which has a property is called animal and sleep duration so if i will run this so in this case this dot animal would resolve to the context of object obj which has properties animal and sleep duration let's make this regular function arrow function 
and see what happens. So nothing got printed here. The arrow function could not resolve this dot animal and this dot sleep. Same reason as we have discussed before. Arrow functions don't have a this. This keyword gets resolved lexically. The JavaScript engine would try to find this variable in the outer function scope and it doesn't have a this. It is then it is undefined to it. So you guys must be thinking that there are certain scenarios where call, bind, and apply are used without a context. We have used it in a lot of times in our programming life. Just like a scenario like this, similar to a scenario like this, where we are calling add function without any context, passing certain parameters to it, and consuming it. Let's see if this would work. Yes, it did work. So if you're working with call, bind, and apply, and it doesn't involve this, a context, you're not binding it to a context, then it's absolutely fine to work with arrow functions. But if you are binding it to a context and using the value of that context, like in this scenario, you should not be using arrow functions. So be careful with the kind of use case you're working with. Next case is arguments object. So what is an arguments object? Arguments object is a special array-like object accessible within regular functions, which holds the values of the arguments passed to a function. So here we have created a function called adder, which is called with certain arguments. What it does is captures those arguments and adds those arguments and returns the value of it. So when I run this function, it took 1, 2, 3, 4 as arguments, added those values, and returned the value 10. If I convert this regular function to an arrow function, what would happen? Let's run it. Oops, we ran into some error. So in the previous video, we discussed that arrow functions don't have arguments object. Argument objects just like this also gets lexically resolved. So when we ran into this error, so this error looks a little complex because we're running in the node environment. If I run it in the browser like this, I'll get an error called arguments is not defined because arguments keyword does not exist within regular functions. So if you run into a scenario like such, you have a use case like this when you have to work with arguments object, do not use arrow functions. So last but not the least when you're working with event handlers. So here we have created an HTML file where it has two divs. One which says click with regular function handler and the other with arrow function handler. We've added event handlers to both of these divs. In one, we are capturing the callback with a regular function, and the second, we are capturing the callback with an arrow function. Let's run this HTML file. This is what it creates. So, when we click on this div, what we are doing is toggling a class on it, which is active. So when we add a class active to it, we're adding a background color to it. So let's try and click on the first div, which says click with regular function handler. When we click on it, we are toggling the class and adding a background color to it and then removing it. But when we do the same to an arrow function handler, it does nothing. Why? The purpose of this implementation is to add a class to the element which fired this click event which is active and uh, add some background color to it so so as to show that the class has been added and when you click back that class has been removed so what usually happens is when you attach an event handler um, to any element the event the, this if you use the this keyword in an event handler the browsers usually bind it to the element which fired this event so when we use a regular function as an event handler, so here this would point to the div with ID regular. So it works perfectly fine. We capture the class list of this div with ID regular. 
uh, call a method called toggle to it and add class active in. If I click again, I'll remove and things like that would happen. But if I do the same thing using an arrow function as an event handler, just the way it has been done here, here. As we all know, and as we all, as we have been discussing again and again, that arrow functions don't have a this. So when JavaScript engine would try to resolve it, it would not resolve it to a div with ID arrow, but to a context outside it, probably window in which it is defined. So it would not work the way it should have. So what would be the workaround for this? So if you have to use arrow functions here, so instead of calling class list on this, you can capture the event object here. So instead of using this, you can use event.currentTarget.classList.toggle and then add class active to it. Let's see if this works. Let's refresh it. Works perfectly fine now. So this was the end of this video. If you like our content and want us to keep creating such videos, then subscribe to our channel and like this video. And please don't forget to click on that bell icon.